Are you having a robotic or laparoscopic hysterectomy? Well, if so, I want to talk today about a device that we use in the uterus while we are doing the surgery to help move or manipulate the uterus. That sounds good to you. Continue watching. Well, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. DuPont. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist, and I'm passionate about educating women to live longer lives, and I believe that begins with great health. Well, last year I had a comment in my comment section, actually from a video that was an abdominal hysterectomy about uterine manipulators. And you know, I realized that we don't really talk about it very much. Now, for an open hysterectomy where we're making a big incision, we don't need to put any devices in the uterus to move the uterus around because we've got big, large clamps that we can pull up on the uterus. So one of the advantages of a total abdominal hysterectomy is that we're able to see better and we have bigger instruments. And so when we're doing a total abdominal hysterectomy, we don't need a uterine manipulator. But if we're doing a laparoscopic or robotic hysterectomy, then we do. So I'm gonna go into detail just about what it is and why we use the uterine manipulators. Well, remember when we're doing a hysterectomy, typically we're gonna remove the uterus and cervix. So the cervix is just the base of the uterus. And so depending on the reason why we're doing the hysterectomy will depend on what type of hysterectomy we do. And your surgeon will talk to you beforehand about which type is best for you given your situation. Remember, if you've got a large pelvic mass or big fibroids, you may need an open hysterectomy or total abdominal hysterectomy because that allows us to be able to see more and to be able to remove big tumors or big masses. So for a lot of my cancer patients, you know, I do an open surgery or open hysterectomy just because sometimes I'll get really large masses that just can't fit through little small incisions. So the other type of hysterectomy that we do besides a vaginal hysterectomy, and that's where we remove the uterus through the vagina, well, is a laparoscopic or robotic hysterectomy. So for the total vaginal hysterectomy, you don't need anything to move the uterus around because we are actually pulling and tugging on the uterus so it just slides out. So we don't really need any device to move it around from side to side, it's not necessary. But if we're doing a laparoscopic, whether it's a single site laparoscopic hysterectomy or robotic hysterectomy, or just a total laparoscopic hysterectomy, we do need a device that we put in the uterus to move it around so that we avoid any structures that are around the uterus and cervix. In the female pelvis, there's really not a lot of space. It's actually a very small space. So what we know is that there are a lot of important structures that are close by, such as the cervix, blood vessels, uh, ureters, which are tubes that connect the kidney to the bladder. And they're very close to the cervix in the female pelvis. So what a uterine manipulator does is it allows us to put a device in the uterus to actually move it around. So typically a member of the surgical team will insert the uterine manipulator while you're sleeping. It's one of the first things we do typically after we place a Foley catheter. And a Foley catheter just goes in your bladder to drain the bladder so that the bladder is deflated during the surgery so it's out of harm's way. And then usually we'll put the uterine manipulator. It's very easy. There's many different types. One of the more common ones is the V-Care. It's very slender and it's very easy to insert. Um, I use one by Cooper Surgical that I like a lot. Um, it has a Coke cup that's kind of a sturdier cup that I like to use, but it, whichever one your surgeon chooses, they're very similar in how they are placed and how they help us during the surgery. It's larger and a little bit longer. And so it makes it easier for him to manipulate. And I can see this as a surgeon on larger uteruses, more complicated cases, they move better with this manipulator. And I think it's got a little bit more of an S curve to it too. So it gives us more range of motion. It's funny how a couple degrees of curve give you so much more centimeters of movement within the pelvis. So I uh, really like that too. The improved ergonomic handle provides better manipulation and access to key surgical targets. It also reduces hand fatigue the natural S-curve shaft contours to the patient's anatomy and provides easier insertion and better exposure. Only five millimeters of cervical dilation is required for V-care insertion. So one thing that's very important is that both or actually all of the different types of uterine manipulators will have like a cup and the cup will sit over the cervix to kind of hold it there. And actually we will use that cup to cut against the uh, cervix once we get to the lower part of the uterus when the hysterectomy is almost finished. And so it allows us to cut over it so that we don't harm structures that are close by. Well, it also allows our assistant, who's ever helping us with the hysterectomy, to move this uterus side to side, up and down. And that helps us while we're 
coagulating and controlling the bleeding. And so it allows us to move the uterus out of harm's way. So it's not close to the bowel, it's not close to the bladder, and it's not close to blood vessels, which are lateral in the pelvis. And so you may not have been told that you had a uterine manipulator, but a lot of times we do use it during laparoscopic surgery. Now there's also some other vaginal probes that can be used. And on my laparoscopic video that I put um, up last year, it had kind of a white probe. If you remember that probe from that video, that was a different type of device. It doesn't really go in the uterus, but it distends the vagina so that the surgeon can cut over the, the cone shaped rod thing that is placed in the vagina so that the bladder is not harmed and the blood vessels and ureter aren't harmed. So there's many different ways we do it, but most of us will use a uterine manipulator during the surgery. Now, I will add that Although the uterine manipulator is placed while you're asleep, it's really done for safety. So we don't always tell patients, you know, every single instrument we use, but that is one that you'll notice. And most patients tolerate it well. They're very small instruments. They are removed once the uterus is taken out. So they don't really cause a lot of discomfort. Now, what one thing patients may notice is sometimes when you have a really large uterus and you're pulling it through the vagina, you may get some tears or lacerations in the vagina. And a lot of times we'll just put some suture in that. And so sometimes that causes more discomfort than putting the device to move the uterus around. But so that you know that we do it and you have now pictures of how they look, I just wanted to make sure you're aware. And thank you for the person that put that comment on my video last year. Well, I hope that was helpful. And if you want more information about different types of GYN surgeries, watch this video next. Thank you and see you next time.